The Boeing B-29 Superfortress was the most advanced propeller-driven bomber of World War II. Advanced armament, propulsion, and avionic systems were critical to the bomber's success in the war in the Pacific. Captain Robert Rodenhouse, a B-29 pilot, recalled, It took me by surprise. First of all, its size, and then its capabilities. And to think that they could take airplanes, bombers, and suppress them so that we can feel the same thing at sea level that we feel at 30,000 feet. And when I knew the range it was capable of and its bomb payload, I couldn't wait to get behind the wheel. When the United States Army Air Corps, USASE, originally ordered the B-29, they planned to use it to bomb Nazi-occupied Europe. However, the B-29S only served in the Pacific. There, they delivered conventional bombs, incendiary bombs, mines, and two nuclear weapons. In the mid-1930s, USADAC was looking for a heavy bomber capable of flying 5,000 miles. The result is the Boeing B-17. It has strength, firepower, speed, bomb payload, and altitude capability. However, it couldn't fully meet design demands, especially in range. Major General Henry H. Hap Arnold issued orders for new bombers on November 10, 1939. The RFP was issued in February 1940. It required a new, very heavy, very long-range bomber to replace the B-17 and B-24. Four aircraft manufacturers, Boeing, Consolidated Voltee, Douglas, and Lockheed, were asked to develop prototypes. Boeing began designing such an airplane in 1938 and soon began revising its design to meet the new specifications. Only Boeing and Consolidated Voltee have developed flying prototypes. USA Act decided on Boeing's design. A contract for two flyable prototypes was issued in September 1940, followed in April 1941 by another contract for 250 aircraft plus spare parts equivalent to 25 bombers. The contract was later changed to 500 B-29S. Boeing innovates a wing with a long, narrow, and high aspect ratio equipped with a large Fowler-style flap, according to the Pacific Warfare Online Encyclopedia. The wing design allows the B-29 to fly at high speed and at high altitude, but also to maintain good handling characteristics during slower takeoffs and landings. Even more revolutionary were the pressurization sections of the aircraft, the flight deck in front of the wing, the gunner's compartment behind the wing, and the tail gunner's station. For the crew, flying above 18,000 feet MDL is more comfortable because the pressure and temperature are regulated. Except for the rear guns, all can be controlled remotely from one of the firing stations, which are located away from the turret to isolate the gunner from noise and vibration. The B-29B is equipped with an AN-APG-15B airborne radar gun sighting system mounted in the tail to help provide defense against night attacks. For maximum streamline, the B-29 has two bomb bays to maintain the narrow fuselage. Six generators generate 54 kilowatts to power the B-29 systems. Each aircraft has an Eagle radar system to aid navigation and bombing accuracy. The first XB-29 prototype flew on September 21, 1942, from Boeing Field, now KBFI, in Seattle, followed by a second prototype later in the year, and then 14 YB-29 service test models. The second B-29 prototype crashed after two engines caught fire. The test crew and 20 people on the ground died. Boeing is building new B-29 facilities in Renton, Washington, and Wichita, Kansas. Under license, Bell built the B-29 in Marietta, Georgia, and Martin built it in Omaha, Nebraska. To build the supercharged Curtis Wright R3350 turbo engine, Curtis Wright and licensee Dodge expanded significantly, while thousands of subcontractors delivered components. The first B-29S off the production line had numerous design flaws because 500 were ordered before the end of flight tests. Captain Rodenhouse commented on the B-29's problems. We had trouble getting the bomb bay doors and landing gear to retract. The biggest problem was engine overheating, and that was so critical, because if an engine coughed or sputtered on a takeoff, you'd never make it, never get off the ground. And the plane was so overloaded that it would never be able to stop with its normal braking. General Curtis LeMay led bomber groups in Europe, then, in July 1944, was transferred to the China-Burma-India Theater to command the 20th Bomber Command, the first to deploy B-29S. 
According to History.net, LeMay said that the B-29 was the buggiest damn airplane that ever came down the pike. After arriving at 20th Bomber Command, five B-29S crashed in two days. Engine failure in the hot desert conditions was blamed. Engine fires during takeoff were the most dangerous flaw, due to magnesium alloy engine components used to save weight. Also, the airplane's fire extinguishing systems were woefully inadequate, failing to fully extinguish fires 87% of the time. By May 1944, 130 B-29S were operational. The first B-29 combat mission went after targets in Bangkok, Thailand, the longest raid of the war to date. Of the 100 B-29S, only 80 reached the target. The others returned to base due to mechanical issues. Bombing results were mediocre. The first bombing mission against the Japanese home islands since Doolittle's raid in April 1942 occurred on June 15, 1944. This was also the first mission launched from Chinese bases. The B-29S attacked iron and steel factories on Kyushu. Again, results were poor. Only 47 of 68 aircraft reached their targets. Additionally, photo reconnaissance showed bombing accuracy, within 1,000 feet of the target, was only 12% during daylight precision raids in January 1945. By June, accuracy improved to 40%. However, for all of its flaws, the B-29 terrified the Japanese. The United States captured Saipan, Tinian, and Guam in the Mariana Islands in August 1944. Captured Japanese airbases were several hundred miles closer to Japan. The bases were repaired and improved. The 21st Bomber Command was established on those islands and began bombing Japan on November 24, 1944. The massive B-29S generated significant logistical burdens, however. Each flew about eight missions monthly. Each mission consumed 6,400 gallons of gasoline and expended eight tons of bombs per airplane. By June 1945, more than 100 cargo ships were needed to meet these logistical requirements. A change of tactics. The high-altitude precision bombing tactics of the 20th and 21st Bomber Commands had yielded poor results. High-altitude winds over Japan were so strong that the B-29's bombing computers could not compensate. Captain Rodenhaus recalled, If we were going with the jet stream, our bombs were over the target. If we were going against it, the bombs would fall short. After several missions a meteorologist went along, he determined the problem was a jet stream. Additionally, the weather over Japan was generally so bad that visual target acquisition was rarely possible at high altitudes. In January 1945, LeMay took over 21st Bomber Command. For two months, crews flew similar high-altitude missions, achieving similar results. The Bloody Island battles were killing or wounding thousands of Americans, and kamikaze attacks caused casualties and sunk or damaged ships. Despite huge losses, the Japanese continued to fight. Therefore, LeMay decided on a risky strategy. B, 29S would fly night bombing missions as low as 5,000 feet. Captain Rodenhaus was shocked, and his reaction was echoed by many. We thought they could throw the kitchen sink up there and hit us. Can you imagine flying a big four-engine bomber at 5,000 feet? Why, that was just unheard of. My crew said, I think those generals lost their marbles. Paradoxically, the B-29 was designed as a high-altitude weapons platform but its greatest successes came at low altitudes. The new plan allowed each B-29 to carry more bombs. Night missions meant that remaining Japanese fighters were avoided. Therefore, most gunners were left behind, W-up behind, 